Hi, my name is Jamis. I am a network engineer, and today we're going to be looking at installing G a standalone GNS3 server inside of Proxmox. Let's go ahead and get started. So, we need to start with uh, downloading the server. Um, at downloading the server, we're going to use GNS3 remote servers designed to work with Ubuntu. You make work of the things, but we're just going to do the Ubuntu. Um, I've included this link down below. You're going to want to go to ubuntu.com, do manual server installation. And here we want to download the 20.04.3 LTS. And this should start downloading. I'm not going to let it download all the way. I'm going to stop it. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and stop it. I've already downloaded it and already uploaded it to the Proxmox server. So let's go over and take a look. We're over here in Proxmox, and what we want to do is we want to upload our Ubuntu ISO. So we're going to want to go to your server. We're going to look at wherever you store ISOs. For me, I'm just storing in my local directory. You're going to want to upload that ISO we just downloaded. Because I've already uploaded, and we don't have to worry about it, it's already there and you can see it right here. So with that done, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create this virtual machine. So I'm gonna come over here. It doesn't really matter uh, where you create it as, as long as there's enough room for it. Um, so I'm gonna create a new VM, we're gonna let GNS3 lab. GNS3 lab. We need to select our ISO. So I'm going to select where I dropped it. ISO images. You can go down and select Ubuntu. We can leave the graphics cards default. GNS3 doesn't really use it. Um, for disk size, use as much as you can, uh, especially if you intend to run Windows Server or anything like that. Um, about 300 is a good rule of thumb there. Let's make it 300 gigabytes. CPU, um, this is same thing as vCPUs and ESXi. Eight cores is a pretty good rule of thumb. We need to change the type to host so they can run KVM machines inside of it. If you don't change the type to host, it won't be able to run everything it needs to. Um, for memory, with my experience, it kind of Two gigs per CPU seems to work out very well at GNS3. So we have eight CPUs. I'm gonna give it 16 gigs of RAM. So that's one, six, three, eight, four megabytes. Hit next. It's gonna run with default networks, and we're gonna confirm. After that, you'll see it pop up over here on the left. <clears throat> It'll have a little lock on it. We have to give it a second until it's created, and then we can start it up. So we're going to start. There we go. We can see it's already started. CPU usage gone up. Memory's gone up a little bit. We go over to console. Actually, just to make this easy, I'm going to make this a full screen console. So this is the standard um, installation for Ubuntu. If you've already been through this and you already know what's going on, you feel free to skip over it. The only thing special we have to, we don't even really have to do anything special here. Just, um, you can set it to DHCP or you can set it to static. If you're going to set it to static, it's a, it's a lot easier to set it to static while we're in here. We're going to go ahead and continue without updating. I'm going to select English. So this here is where you can change if you want it to be static or not. Um, you come in here to edit IPv4. Change it from man automatic to manual. Um, but for right now, I'm just going to leave it as DHCP because that gets the job done for me. We're going to select done. 
You can ignore proxy addresses, mirror addresses. We do want to use the entire disk, so we're going to select that. Hit done. And everything here should look correct. We're just going to let it guide itself and uh, do exactly what it needs to. So we're going to hit done. We're going to hit continue. We're going to have to uh, put in your name. So I'm going to put my name in here. We have to give the server a name because it's going to run just GNS3. GNS3 is a pretty good option. You need a username and a user password. Select done. We do want to make sure we install the open SSH server. And select done. We can skip the rest of these. Done. And now it's installing. And I'm going to fast forward to the portion where it installs and come back in just a minute. Alright, it looks like it's done installing. So uh, let's go ahead and reboot. Tell it to reboot now. It's going to get angry because it can't eject the CD-ROM. So let's go ahead and eject that CD-ROM. Come back to console. Press enter and there you go, it's gonna reboot. It's most likely gonna be happy. Now, once it's done rebooting, we're going to uh, console into it with putty. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring up putty right now. Don't exactly remember what the um, what the IP address was so I'm just gonna log in through the console and we're gonna do an IPA and then it'll show us the current IP address whoops so here we go it looks like um, IPA and we see 100214. Let's go to 10.00.214. Accept the SSH key. All right, let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. Go down here to is it terminal. Window appearance. Here we go. Change the font. Let's make it about a uh, twenty. There we go. That's a lot better for what we're gonna do. All right. So now we're in our Ubuntu virtual machine, which we're gonna install GNS3 in. First thing we do is uh, we're gonna go ahead and run a sudo apt update, and then sudo apt upgrade. And everything should be more or less done. I'm pretty sure it installed most everything during the um, installation phase. So everything's up to date. Now we're gonna go and upgrade all the packages that we can. While this is upgrade, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the next part. This next part is going to be installing GNS3 on the remote server. This is a, a f officially supported by GNS3. Um, they have a whole bunch of instructions right here. Uh, basically what we need to do is we need to copy all this. Um, they do have an option to install GNS3 with OpenVPN. I'm not going to go into that here. Uh, I, I have GNS3, th this server sitting behind another router. Um, and so, you know, there's to me it's like being on my LAN so there's no real need to have open VPN so I'm just going to not do that part but we're gonna go ahead and do the rest of it I'm gonna include a link to this down in the description if this is something you want to look at let's go back to putty so once this is done we're gonna go ahead and uh, run all the commands that were right back here
It's actually three three commands in this set. First one's gonna be CD temp, and then we're going to curl the setup script from their GitHub, and then we're gonna install the GNS3 remote server with IOU and the 386 repos. I'm not doing OpenVPN. However, if you wanna include OpenVPN, just copy this line right here, and it'll also install OpenVPN. Um, and I'll go ahead and include both lines down in the description so you can choose which one you want. That being said, if you do decide, if you do install OpenVPN and don't use it, it's okay. It's um it's not a huge deal. Alright, so we're gonna CD in the temp. We're gonna curl everything in here that we need. And then we are going to install this remote server. It's important that you do this as a sudo. If you forget the sudo, it'll just error out. Um, all right, while that's running, let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and grab the GNS3 desktop download. You will need to have a GNS3 account to download this. Um, I have one, see I'm, I'm already logged in up here on the right hand side. Once you log in, you just go download and then it'll give you an offer. Um, it's usually the SolarWinds offer. You're welcome to use that if you want. I don't personally, but it's all good. I've used SolarWinds software in the past. All right, while that's doing its thing, we can go ahead and install this new GNS3 um, client on our machine. Let's go ahead and open it up. I'm just gonna agree here. Everything looks good. Let's go through the install process. If I remember right, the installer will ask you if there's additional things that you want. Um, you don't have to agree to those. Now I have not run, actually I have run this installer on Fedora Linux and it ran pretty well there too. Being said, most of the machines I work on now are, are, are Windows based. But it seems to do a pretty good job. Alright. It's going to ask to install win pcap. Um, it'll probably also ask to install um, Wireshark. Those are very useful tools uh, in MAP as well. These are very useful tools and they have some really nice functionality inside GNS3. I'd recommend installing them if you don't have them already. Remember right here on the right, this is our client installing, and here on the left, this is the server installing. And it says Wireshark, so we're probably gonna get prompted for a Wireshark installed. So we'll just give that a second. If you don't want solar putty, you can hit cancel. Do next. I'm going to select no. You're welcome to select yes. And we're going to start GNS3. And it's going to take us to a um, GNS3 download page. We're welcome to ignore this or look at it. I'm just going to close that out. All right, so if we remember our IP address here and we don't have to we can do an IPA and we'll see where 10.0.0.2.14 so here on the setup wizard we're gonna say run applications on a remote server select advanced we're gonna put the host the host is 10.0.0.214 the username and the password 
Connect next. It's going to stop the local server. Part of the reason you want to run the remote server is that it supports KVM machines. Your local server will not. Remote host, close the connection. All right, so it looks like that server's good. We can close that there. You have full screen here, and we're most likely done. Let's do a quick test run. Create a new project, because we've got VPCs. We'll go ahead and put VPCs in here. Ethernet switch. One thing, a couple things I like to do, I, I like to show the layers, not, la not layers. I like snap to grid and show grid. Um, to me, it's a lot easier. To me, it's a lot easier to have the whole thing nice and clean looking. It, it, it helps me organize it. So we're going to connect PC one, switch one, PC two, switch one. Let's go ahead and decide an IP schema for these things. Just test this. We'll do 10.0.0.1-24. Over here we'll do 10.0.0.2-24. And let's go ahead and start everything. Also while we're here, we'll go to Preferences. If you ever need to change anything in here, um, here's where you can change your console application. It by default goes to PuTTY. Um, if you need to change your server IP address, username, or password, you can do that right here. Um, yeah, and there's a couple other theming things in here that are really nice. Now, once we get all this, um, we'll go ahead and console into everything PC1 and PC2. And let's look over here, window appearance. And I'll go ahead and increase the size of this. I'll do the same thing over here. All right, in PC1, we're going to assign it this IP address of IP 10.0.0.1 stroke 24. For here we're going to do an IP of 10.0.0.2 stroke 24 and we're just going to connect check to see if these two nodes have connectivity so we're going to do ping 10.0.0.1 ping 10.0.0.2 all right so there we go we just installed GNS3 on a remote server um, a Ubuntu server inside of Proxmox and everything appears to be working. I think that's all I had for this video. Yeah, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to install the, uh, the Juniper VMX. So um, that video is going to be uploaded immediately after this one. Feel free to hang out and give it a watch if that's what you're interested in. Um, I don't think I'm going to do a video on how to install the um, iOS images. Uh, there's a lot of those already out there. Um, I'm trying to create novel content, not reinvent the wheel. Anyhow, my name's been Jameis. Um, thanks for taking the time to uh, thanks for taking time to watch my video. And uh, if you have any tips, tricks, or pointers, I'd always appreciate it. Thank you.